Hey everybody, this is Robert from Black Belt Gaming. I uh, just thought I'd talk a little bit about my uh, my game here, Sentinels of the Multiverse, my first real playthrough of the game. I think I want to start by thanking everybody that took the time to watch the videos and, and uh, offer their helpful advice to me, whether that was catching a mistake I made or or give me some tips on how to play this guy over here absolute zero I'm kinda glad I ended up uh, choosing him and giving him a shot even though it was my first game uh, some of you said he's a bit more complicated and may not be such a good character to play for your first time but with uh, all of you watching and helping like that uh, it, 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 it was great. It was a lot of fun to give him a try and, and learn a little bit more about the character and what he can do. Uh, a couple of things that uh, in my last or kind of final round of the game that you spotted, I once again neglected to uh, take care of the nemesis damage. So uh, if these guys hit each other, you've got that icon there and that icon there. Uh, that's something that I've learned from this playthrough that uh, I'll need to keep a careful eye on is looking out for that nemesis damage and remembering that. So I neglected to add in I think an extra point at, 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 a, at a point there in the game. And then um, there was something about Baron Blade here. I think it may be on the other card when uh, that flips over it starts on this side and then it flips over when you take this guy out it wasn't right there but it's on this card and I think it says right there at the end of the villain turn Baron Blade deals the hero target with the highest HP H energy damage uh, that would have I think been an attack there on absolute zero so I missed that but Absolute Zero had the highest health. He would have uh, survived. I don't think it would have drastically changed the outcome of the game and, and KO'd one of the heroes or anything. Uh, for any of you that also may be new to this game, if you're like me and you're learning a bit about how this game plays, uh, what happens? What happens when a character runs out of, of HP? Uh, I believe it's kind of like the uh, uh, the villain there. The, the card flips over, and you got some different artwork on the back. Uh, I believe it's somewhat of a uh, uh, defeated view of the hero, and then you're not. They're not totally out. They are uh, considered to be able to do. I guess. I don't know if it's just one of these, but they're able to take an action uh, on their turn and help out the other the other heroes. Uh, I think you have to choose one, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So like if, uh, if Wraith were in her uh, KO'd position there and we were going through the turn, when it got to her, uh, I believe it said that I could choose one of these. So one hero regains two HP, and you could give somebody two HP that needed it. So they're still contributing... Uh, not nearly to the level that they were when they were really in the game, but uh, they are still somewhat around and doing what they can in their own way. I also heard, uh, I think it was over at Board Game Geek, that some people play with a, a hero or two, uh, you know, turned over like this, and they use them as sidekicks. Uh, so they don't really count in this variant uh, as a hero on the board, but uh, you've got them for a little extra boost. Maybe if you're fighting a tough villain or you're using a lower number of heroes, like uh, three or so, two or three, and you can get a little help from a sidekick. And uh, still gives you just a little bit of a power up. Uh, without having to worry about playing a whole deck and playing a whole nother hero. So that was pretty interesting. Maybe I'll try that sometime and see how that uh, variant works. I don't think that's in the official rule book or anything. Uh, I think just some fans of the game uh, came up with that. Well, uh, the game was, was very enjoyable. Um, 
I had been warned that there was a lot of uh, little things to take care of, these little counters and hit point tokens. And to understand that the first version of this game came without these, I can definitely see why a uh, basically a second edition or an enhanced version of the game it decided to put these in. It definitely helped uh, keep track of you know what bonuses you had and what kind of effects you had. Uh, I've even you know pulled out this one to put on the uh, the bad guy. Um, very nice that they did that. So um, never having played or tried out the original printing of the game, I, I would certainly recommend uh, giving this enhanced version a shot if if you can get it. The extra tokens here, uh, the extra markers and all really do uh, help you keep track of things. Playing it solo, how was it as a solo experience? Well, that's my only experience with the game and I thought it was fun. I had a good time uh, with it. Uh, you've probably seen on my channel that I've played the DC Comics game, including a uh, popular solo variant for that one. And I've played the Marvel uh, Legendary deck building game. And uh, even even played that one solo. So what do I think? Um, this one was really great because you got to take an entire deck of cards just uh, solely for that hero. So everything that you're pulling out uh, into your hand is just totally meant for that hero. So uh, that, that was neat. It gave you a way to... Uh, sorry, that was my email notification going off. It really gave you a way to... Um, to feel like that character. So, you know, Absolute Zero and the cards I was pulling for him, he worked very differently uh, than, than the other heroes did. And uh, they sort of had their own style. And, you know, Wraith here uh, didn't have a lot of hit points and took quite a bit of damage. You know, she's not armored up like he is. She's not, uh, you know, invulnerable like Legacy can be. And she can't heal herself like Absolute Zero, but man, she could really deal the damage. Uh, so she was a very valuable member to the team in her own way. And of course, these guys had a little bit more staying power. And I think if I had gotten out some of these other uh, invulnerability cards and stuff, that would have that would have done a lot for to, to make Legacy even that much harder to hurt. Uh, I guess the only uh, disappointing thing that could come up would be, you know, sometimes you're drawing uh, a couple of cards of the same thing, and uh, there may be two or three of these in a deck. I'm not exactly sure how many, but, you know, sometimes you're excited to get your next card, and, and it's the same thing. But... Um, you know, when it's a very important card and you need it, or when some effect makes you throw away a bunch of equipment cards or something, you're really glad you've got it. So I certainly see uh, the reasoning behind that. So there is a reason for it, and, and that's, uh, that's a strength of the game. But uh, it was kind of always cool to get something different. Um, but I think if those, you know, those, uh, what is it, pterodactyl thieves would have taken a bunch of equipment away, it certainly would be nice to be able to draw another one that was very uh, important to that hero and get it out on the board. With Legacy, um, I, I didn't really have a way with the power on his card. I didn't have a way for him to just start doing damage to the bad guy. So it was actually pretty lucky that I ended up getting this motivational charge. I used that a lot. But most of these other cards are not really attack cards. Got this one as a one shot, but I I didn't have that many attack cards for Legacy. So he did a great job boosting and making other heroes do a lot of damage. But um, I would imagine if you're playing Legacy, uh, you really want to be able to get in there and mix it up and and. Uh, nail the bad guy so 
sometimes I think trying to get the attack card you're really looking for uh, might be could possibly be uh, disappointing if you have to wait a long time and a bunch of turns before you can get that but really really uh, enjoyed the game and um, you know I, I really enjoy the Marvel Universe and the DC Universe I didn't buy this one right away because I thought I don't know these characters um, I'm not sure if I want to invest in a another superhero card game when I don't really know who the characters are but just having played it and and seen how they work and and getting their their uh, different decks in action and and playing against the bad guy and the environment deck um it really you know in my mind kind of came to life and and I had a f you know a feeling about what this bad guy was about and uh who these different heroes were and what they could do and they started to really grow on me so uh you know, I don't really do standard reviews. Uh, I play different games, and, and some of them are popular, and some of them may not be. But uh, if a game is great and I had a good time playing it, I'll certainly recommend it. And this is one uh, that if you had a chance to see me play or seen someone else play uh, and it looked interesting to you, then uh, I would definitely recommend checking it out. I had a great time playing this one, and... and uh, some of you have asked me to play through another one with a different uh, bad guy, maybe a different environment deck, and some different heroes. And I certainly wouldn't mind doing that. So I uh, hope you'll catch me for that one sometime. But uh, in the meantime, I may jump on to, to something new and different. And I'll try to come around again uh, and do Sentinels, Sentinels of the Multiverse again with some different people. But uh, thanks thanks guys for all of your help uh, in helping me learn how to play this game and if you were also learning along with me uh, I please ho uh, I hope that you will learn from my mistakes so remember that ne nemesis damage that was something that was easy for me to overlook and I'll catch you guys for some more fun on the channel very soon thanks